In this session, we're going to take a look at the account management functionality that's part of the security and compliance feature in Event Sentry. I'm here in the management console and I already expanded the complete tracking package that's set up by default. And if we click at account management, we can see the major areas this feature covers. So there's three major areas that account management covers. One is user account changes. Then we have group account changes and computer account changes. Now, starting from the bottom, computer accounts can only be created on domain controllers. So this feature or this part of the feature actually will only apply and work on domain controllers. Groups and users can, of course, be created not just on domain controllers, but servers and workstations as well. So any sort of uh, user or group change that occurs on your domain, whether it's a domain controller, a server, or again, a workstation will be detected by EventCentry, provided that the correct auditing, of course, is enabled. So it's the same thing with all the other compliance tracking features that we have in EventCentry they all require that auditing is turned on. These features are not to be confused with the AD monitor functionality in Event Century that's completely separate and only applies to Active Directory domains. So while there is a lot of overlap, this feature is a little more simple. And the main difference is that this feature will also work on member servers and workstation, whereas AD monitor will strictly observe changes on a domain. So if you're curious, is somebody creating a user account on a server or a workstation or making changes to groups on a server or workstation, uh, then you'll have to use the account management feature in Event Sentry. We can see here that by default, all checkboxes are checked, meaning that as if we start from the top here now for user account management, uh, we want to know about user creation and deletion, user account modifications, and user status changes, so such as a user is disabled, for example. A key advantage of using a D-monitor in a domain environment is that a D-monitor's change detection is a little bit more granular, especially when it comes to modifications. So a D-monitor will show you exactly which attribute, for example, changed when the user account is changed, whereas uh, in with this functionality that's built into the event entry agent it relies on the audit events and the audit events are not as forthcoming with information. Um, so generally speaking, if a change is made to a user account, let's just say the middle initial is changed or other details are changed, then we'll generally not see that in this type of report. You will see that a change was made to a user account, but you will not necessarily see what's changed. So in order to see this, uh, you will need to uh, utilize or use a D monitor. Now going down now to the Groups, same thing. Uh, you can tell EventCentry, are you interested in monitoring group addition and deletion, modifications, and membership changes? And you can also tell EventCentry whether you just want to monitor security enabled groups or whether you want to do, uh, monitor distribution groups as well. And then, of course, for computer accounts, very similar monitoring the creation and deletion of computer accounts and any sort of changes to computer accounts. And in case you wonder what type of changes uh, would be made to uh, computer accounts, well, that's usually just the, the password being reset so to keep the computer accounts password. Uh, as is the case with uh, many other features, uh, compliance, uh, security and compliance tracking features in Event Century, auditing should be enabled in a GPO. If it's not, then you can force or you can tell Event Century to enable the auditing for you. But again, we recommend that this is enabled in a group policy so that there's no conflict and you have a central place where you control all your audit settings because this should be on whether you're using Event Century or not. And on the bottom, of course, you can, as always, configure the database where all the data is written to. And a little add-on functionality in Event Century. Event Century can try to tell you where a particular change was made from. So if a, if a change is made from a workstation, for example, or a server, then Event Century can attempt to resolve the IP address or the host name if it can. Now let's go into the Event Century web reports. We can find all the reports for this in the Active Directory Changes group. Again, this is not a D monitor. A D monitor has its own section, similar, but not the same. And we're going to just look at the user and group reports here. So if you go to user by default, uh, we're looking at the last 24 hours, nothing there. I'm going to expand this. So my test data is a couple of days old. And here we have a change that I made to a server one here in the test environment. We can see that only one account was ever changed. So that's the test user account here. We can see that a, a variety of different actions have been performed on that user account. So if we click on the detail tab here, we can see that we have nine events and we can also see that uh, maybe the ordering may, might not be completely correct. We can see that added and deleted are at the end and there's some 
The first event here at 56 is a password set before the user was even created because it was deleted here and added and deleted or kind of switched around. And if you look at the event number, you'll see that they're not in order. So basically what happened here is Windows logs these events all at the same time, essentially, but they do have different event numbers that are uh, sequential. So we're going to change the ordering here and look at event number to see this in the correct order. And now we, it makes more sense. So now we can see that the user was added and deleted, presumably as a test. And then it was added again, the user account was then enabled because it was disabled by default, then there's some number of changes made to the user account, we can't see what those changes are, because the security event log. So for example, if we click here, we can see that, uh, that we don't really see what has actually changed here. Uh, but then we can, we can see that the password was set. So of course, when you create a new user account, a password has to be set. And then we can also see that about 20 uh, two seconds later, this user account was deleted again. If we, if we go over here, then we can also see who had made these changes. So for group account changes, it's very similar. We're going to go to Active Directory changes here, click on group. Uh, here we have a overview again, we can immediately see, okay, which groups have been changed. And the only group affected here is smooth operators. Uh, we can see some more information uh, that members were added, created, deleted, and so forth. Um, so we're just going to click on detail here again. And we have the same issue we had before. So, uh, so two events here are logged at the same time, but not in the right order. So we're going to change this again and switch this to the event number. And now we have the correct chronological order. We can see that number one, a security group was created, the name of the group was smooth operators, uh, the SID domain, and of course, the target account ID name would be the group name. Uh, nothing more really that happened there. Second event follow up event, okay, I do not need this is simply the group having been changed. And there's no more, there's not uh, any particular information here. And even if you look at the actual Windows event, there's nothing really pertinent here, but it's logged nevertheless and displayed here in event entry. Then we can see that a few seconds later, a member was added and it was, uh, of course, the uh, group in question again is the smooth operators. And we can see that the, and let's take a look here, that the training administrator user, and here we have the full path, was added to that group. And then we can also see that yet another few seconds later, the entire group was deleted. So not, not just that the member was removed, but the group that was created since it was just a test was deleted again. So that's pretty much it. When it comes to account management tracking, pretty uh, basic information there, but definitely useful, definitely something you want to have active on the network so you can identify any sort of changes that have been happening on your servers, workstations, and of course, domain controls. If you are a Active Directory administrator, we definitely recommend that you take a look at AD Monitor. It does a lot more than just this, but this is a really, really good start to at least know, okay, which users groups and computer accounts have been created on my network.